going to have you do all of my tech plan presentations from now on. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, and Juan is right that the city has a lot of constraints, but one of the constraints we don't have is actually talent, IT talent here in Chicago. And so part of what I'm hoping to do here tonight is spend a little bit of time talking about procurement, which is probably a topic that makes most of us want to watch paint dry instead, um, but is actually the mechanism with which we can officially work together and hopefully make innovation a little bit easier between the two of us. So it's worth our time to figure out how to do it a little bit more easily, uh, which is why I hope that we're all here. I'm going to go through about five slides to set the scene in a tiny bit more detail based on that backdrop, which was a great starting point. Um, because I think it's worth it for us to understand a little bit how procurement works. Um, it's certainly nowhere near perfect now for either of us. Um, and if we can get through some of those hurdles and make it easier, I think that there's a lot of really wonderful things we can do together. And to spend 30 seconds on my background, um, I spent a long time in the private sector trying to work with government. So I've been on the other side of the procurement equation. So I uh, had some good insight from that side of it. And then when I switched over, um, I came into the budget office first for a year and then switched over to the IT department. I tried to actually get out of IT for a little while and it didn't work. Um, so this process is actually just as hard for us on the inside because I can't get to the great innovative talent out in the city. And I know what you guys can do. So it's as much of a, of a heartache for me. So there's a lot of incentive on both sides to fix this. Um, so, and part of why I brought James with me here tonight is because there are a lot of rules and regulations that guide what we can do, and he's going to keep us on the right side of the law, which is also really important. So he can give us a lot of advice around that. Um, so a couple of quick slides to point out what we're doing here to kind of give you a framework. Um, so we've been through the introductions. You guys are really fast and efficient about that, which was awesome. Quick overview of the initiatives. Next slide. Um, so. What I'm hoping to do tonight is clearly define some of the challenges, which you guys are going to help me do. Some of you I know have tried to reach out to us, some of you probably haven't just because it appeared too daunting. Um, gather some input and ideas to try and improve the process. Some of you have actually already reached out to me via email. There have been some blog posts, some um, Twitter activity, so we already have a good starting point for that. Um, so typo in the last line. A typo has existed for all of these workshops. You're getting the exact same typos as everybody else has. Um, but define <laughs> some, I like to be even. Uh, define some recommendations based on this input. So we're going to be putting these recommendations together to officially share with the mayor's office and the chief procurement officer um, of the city to recommend some um, some specific policy changes that we can make in the city of Chicago to improve procurement. Um, especially with startup small companies here in the city of Chicago, and establish a plan to implement those recommendations once they're approved. I'm a big person for you know dates and setting expectations clearly and communicating those back so that you'll know what to expect and when. Um, that actually said three listening sessions. This is our fourth. So just so you know what else we've been doing, um, we went through this exact same presentation and conversation at OpenGov last Thursday. Um, met with, I have a minority and women-owned business advisory council, so we've had this conversation with them, which was uh, quite enlightening because many of them have done business with the city, uh, so they are very informed on the topic and very vocal about it, and then had a specific conversation with additional startups here in the city that was organized by TechNexus and ITA um, just last Friday, so this is our fourth session, um, and we're seeing some coalescing of ideas, which is good. And then these initial recommendations will go to the chief procurement officer by the end of April. So we're trying to move pretty quickly. Um, so quickly to give you a framework of sort of how we work, um, I thought I'd quickly go through the processes that we go through to procure services and then the types of agreements that these lead to. This is by no means an exhaustive list of all of the ways that the city can procure services, but the most common for us in the technology space. Um, so the ever popular request for proposals. Um, this is the one that people are most familiar with, but actually not the one we use most often. Um, but this is open to the entire public. Anyone is welcome to come and bid on these. They're uh, publicly advertised on our website. Uh, we are required by law also to advertise them in newspapers, so they're often in some times for anyone that goes to find them there in print. Um, these will result in an actual contract for a specific scope of work. Requests for qualifications. 
Um, occasionally, for certain types of services, we will um, run a, a particular procurement to ask vendors to come in and pre-qualify. Um, this does not lead to a particular scope of work, and we will then release an RFP to just that pre-qualified group. Oftentimes, we will do this. Um, this is actually the process we're going through right now um, around the broadband challenge. We've asked um, people interested in um, in the broadband space where you have, have the ability to build a broadband network to come in and um, provide us with their qualifications and ability to do that work. And we will then release the RFP just to that qualified pool. Uh, we do this uh, sometimes when we need to actually share sensitive information that we don't want to share with the entire public, so we pre-qualify. Um, task order request. So once we have a pre-qualified pool in a given scope area, say um, someone's ability to develop reference architecture or do web design, um, we will release a task order for a specific scope of work. These tend to be smaller in nature, under a million dollars, etc. Um, it's a very specific statement of work. Reference contract. So this one is sort of interesting. Um, the Chicago Code provides for um, an ordinance provides an ordinance that allows us to create a Chicago-based contract based on another municipality's competitive bid. So, say the city of Boston ran a competitive RFP for creation of a financial system. They awarded that contract to, um, and I'm picking these out of a hat, to Accenture for X software and Y dollars. And I'm picking that out of a hat. Um, we could leverage that competitive bid and build a, an identical contract. So city terms and conditions, Chicago terms and conditions, not Boston's. Same contractor, same software, same scope of work, the same cost or better. Right? We can always negotiate a better deal. Um, so we don't have to run our own procurement. We can leverage it on Boston's as long as theirs was a competitive uh, procurement. We don't use this that often. Where you'll see us use it most often is where we are leveraging a contract from one of the sister agencies in Chicago. Because um, oftentimes we will leverage the procurement that, say, CTA or the Parks Department used. Um, joint procurements, where we go to market with another agency, most often, a, almost always, a Chicago based agency. And here we do it to get volume, right? We'll get a better price if we pool our resources with say, parks and CTA and schools, right, bigger bang for our buck. And then non-competitive review board, there are circumstances where competitive bid does not make sense. Um, in the IT space, we use this most often um, not because there isn't another uh, product, for example, that exists, that exists in the marketplace, which is what most people use the non-competitive review board for. We will use this where we've made an enterprise-wide investment and when the contract is up in three years, um, going to market for, say, another ERP system just to rip and replace the one we finally finished implementing makes no sense. Um, so we will go to the non-competitive review board just for the licensing contract and get their approval to just renew that contract without competitive bid. We do not do this for the implementation and support resources, but only for the software contract. So that's what we use that for. All of those are, at, are, are um, on the city's website for transparency purposes, so the public knows when we've been approved to bypass the competitive uh, bid process. Um, but we will do that for things like enterprise software that just it doesn't make sense financially or operationally for the city to do a rip and replace for those large systems. In terms of the types of contracts we sign, master consulting agreements are framework agreements where we will sign a multi-year um, funded agreement where we establish the contract terms with a with a partner, with a vendor, um, but not for a specific statement of work. And then we will release task orders to that contract. And um, so there's a, there's a lot of efficiencies to that for the city and the contractor. So we will negotiate the contract terms once and then just have to negotiate the statement of work against that contract. Um, term agreements, so this is where we need a set um, type of services for a period of time, but there's no set deliverable, so think application maintenance, right? We need you to maintain this application for five years. We're going to pay you X number of dollars, either you know, per year, per month, whatever, but there's no set deliverable. And then finally, deliverable specific agreements, build me this website, X dollars, 
there's usually a time frame contemplated, um, but what we're really contracting around is finish that website to these stipulations of quality, um, and that's what we're contracting around. So those are our standard kinds of contracts. Any questions around any of that? <laughs> 